plaintiff, Donna Garber, says the defendant is her daughter. And because she was under a lot of stress and on medication during her pregnancy, the defendant was born hearing impaired. Donna feels a lot of guilt due to her daughter's condition, but she's suing her today for unpaid loans. Defendant Casey Owens cannot believe her mother's suing her, knowing that Casey's husband recently left her and their two children for another woman. Casey is appreciative of everything her mother's done, but feels she's being unreasonable. All right, tell me what's going on. Judge, I don't want to be here. This is not something that I want to do. You know, no parent wants to sue their child, but I feel like this is my only recourse. Um, my pregnancy with her was uh, very difficult. I was under a lot of stress and I was on a lot of medication. Um, because of the medication and the stress I was under, uh, she was born hearing impaired. And I, I feel like that's my fault. You know, if I would have handled the pregnancy better, if I would have handled the stress better, that she wouldn't be hearing impaired. Um, when she was born, everybody said she was fine. There was nothing wrong with her. But I knew as a parent that there was something wrong. And the doctors kept saying that I was just an overprotective mother. Um, when she was about three years old, I finally got someone to listen to me. She was tested and she, again, you know, she was hearing impaired. We got her hearing aids. We got her in speech therapy because your first two years is your most important as a child. So she lost three years of her life, actually. What do you mean, lost three years? Well, a child learns the most. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. anybody learns the most the first two years of your life. You learn speech. And so if you're saying she, you weren't able to teach her properly. Right. Had you known she was hearing impaired, you would have taught her in a manner which she would not have lost any years. Well, it's, it's not just that. It was that I would have got the help she needed. Right, because just because you're have some type of uh, deficiency in your uh, life doesn't mean you don't learn as well as everybody else. Because no. many people who are performing less in one area because of an impairment doesn't mean, Stevie Wonder, let me just give you that. Okay, <laughs> Yahoo. <laughs> All right, we got that point. So let's go ahead, what else okay. do you want me to Anyway, um, she was shy, withdrawn child, obviously. Um, her sisters, all of us, we just really felt like we needed to protect her, you know, and that guilt was just gnawing at me. And uh, again, she got into speech therapy. She got hearing aids. Um, when she was in grade school, uh, they asked her to play basketball. In fact, she scored the winning goal the last game. You know, I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. Um, she started blossoming. She started coming into her own. She got asked to the prom. Now, this girl, Looked like a Hanson brother. I don't know if you guys remember the Hanson brothers. I'm serious. She looked like a Hanson. I mean, she always wore jeans, long t-shirts, stringy hair, no makeup. I mean, she looked like a boy. Um, but then her sisters got together and made her out to this Cinderella. I mean, she was gorgeous. She was beautiful. In fact, we sat there when she came down the hallway, dumbstruck. I mean, we were just, you know. Do you still feel guilty about her uh, outcome? I still feel guilty because she has an impairment that, is I the, mean, she does is, well. Is the impairment inhibiting her ability to function uh, at a level that is satisfactory to her? As long as she has hearing aids and they work properly, <sighs> she's just like you and I. Just because you have some type of uh, deficiency in your uh, life doesn't mean you don't learn as well as everybody else. Because no. many people who are performing less in one area because of an impairment doesn't mean, Stevie Wonder, let me just give you that. Okay. Plaintiff Donna Garber is suing her daughter, who cannot believe Donna would bring her to court knowing her husband recently left her and their children for another woman. All right, let me get some background from you. First of all, I just want to say this month, this past month and a half has been pure hell for me. You know, um, I'm going through a lot right now. You know, I'm going through a divorce. In fact, um, my husband just up and left me and my two kids 
for obviously another woman. Mm. Number two, um, this past um, week and a half, I was actually involved in the wreck. Mm. Um, my car was side swiped by a horse trailer, a huge semi horse trailer, um, did over $2,500 worth of damage to my car. I don't even have a car right now. Um, number three, I don't even have a full-time job right now. I still only have a part-time job. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, I love my mom to death. I really do. I appreciate everything you've ever done for me, but I feel like she's being unreasonable. I can't even believe, I mean, I can't even believe I'm here to be honest with you. No offense. I really love you. You're awesome. But <laughs> I, so you prefer to watch me on television though. Right. <laughs> I, I just really, honestly, your honor, I, I mean, it's killing me being here. I really don't feel like I should be here. You know, this all started back this past October. But let um, me allow her to tell me how it all started, ma'am. Okay. Her and her um, husband uh, were living with me off and on. They had financial problems, their home whole life together. Um, during the time they were living in my home, I, we all had the same car insurance company. And since they were always late on their bill, we agreed to put it all on mine. It comes out of my checking account every month of the same day. And then they were supposed to pay the monthly fees, her for her car, him for his truck. Um, this went along fine until April of 2009. Then they stopped paying. So I paid the car insurance every month for the last two years. Um, and the total of her car insurance is $1,394. Then in um, May, the first week of May, 2009, um, her husband called me up and said, my, my truck needs some repairs to it. And since Casey wasn't working at the time and I knew that he was the only one with any income, I knew he had to have his, his truck to go back and forth. Was that the with. only car? No, they had another car, but it was not running very well. Okay, so you loaned him money? So I, he said it'd be about $2,000. Okay. I said, okay. okay. Um, it ended up costing $2,603 when the total estimate was done. And then in November, he called me up and he said, we are a little over a week mm -hmm. before it goes into foreclosure. Have you received anything yet? No, sir. Okay. Ma'am, what do you say to this? I, I admit, I do owe for the car insurance, but Your Honor, that truck is not mine. I have my own vehicle. He had his truck. You know, he's the one that drove. Yours was working? Maybe not all the time, but I mean. So he did need a car to go to work. <laughs> yeah, but I had a. <laughs> huh? It's my car. <laughs> he has his own truck. That's his truck. I have my right. own car. And he needed a truck or some form of transportation to get to work, right? Yes. So the only thing you're denying is the loan for the truck because you say it was his. Well, also for the house as well, because, you know, he made most of the money. You know, I felt like he should be paying most of the the mortgage? bills, the mortgage. Yes. All right. And you all needed that for the family to live in, right? Yes. All right. Good enough. Well, the law is, and that's why I was very specific about asking you whether these things were necessary, because in a marriage, those things that are necessary expenses for a marriage or family are joint expenses. That would be some type of game people could easily play with their husband and wife. They say, well, you get the mortgage in your name. So that if you don't pay, then the mortgage company, they, all they can do is garnish your check. They can't get mine. And if you quit working, then they can't garnish your check and they don't get their money at all. I can work full time. I can make hundreds of thousands of dollars and they'll be left in the lurch. That's why they're called joint assets and joint debts. So that's why I was asking. He needed the car to go to work. Yes. Took a minute, but you admit it. Yes. <laughs> You all needed the mortgage. You needed a house to live in. Yes. You knew that. So those are two necessary expenses, ma'am. And then you agreed to pay the insurance. So between you agreeing to pay the insurance, the necessary expenses of truck and mortgage, you're going to have to pay your mother. Yes. Good luck to you. Judgment for the Thank plaintiff. Thank you so have a good day. much. Sorry, I really am, and I love you so much, and I, and I didn't want to do this. I really didn't, but I just need you to be responsible. And I want us to get back to where we were.